Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The question of thrombosis in IDP is really a new question. Okay? Historically, we think of this as a bleeding disorder. But there are two registry studies that were published even before the advent of the newer treatments, which are called the thrombopoietin receptor agonists, L-thrombopag and romiplostin. Both of these drugs now are approved for this disease. And it was notable that in the clinical trials, thrombotic events occurred in the range of about 5% of individuals, both venous and arterial thrombotic events. But in registry studies from Denmark and from the United Kingdom, show that in reality, patients with immune thrombocytopenia historically have always had an increased risk of thrombosis. And the relative risk over a controlled age-matched population is about twofold, both for arterial and venous thrombosis. The other thing about um, thrombosis is that when it has been seen in patients with ITP, it does not necessarily correlate with the platelet count. So you can see an arterial or venous thrombosis even if the platelets are within normal range, even if the, the platelets are somewhat low, or if the patients are elevated as in after a therapy. It doesn't always correlate that thrombosis will occur with those highest level of platelets, so it's hard to tell you know, when the patient is at risk because any platelet count can lead to thrombosis. Now, why would an individual who has a disorder that has low platelets be at risk for thrombosis? Part of it is treatment. We know that intravenous immunoglobin, which is used in this disease, is associated even in patients without immune thrombocytopenia with a risk of arterial thrombosis, particularly in older patients. We know that um, immune thrombocytopenia is an inflammatory disorder, and inflammatory disorders are associated with activation of the clotting system and an increased risk of thrombosis. And we know that there's a population of patients who have the secondary form of the disease associated with lupus or the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, and those individuals also have an increased risk of thrombosis, even in the presence of thrombocytopenia. The cumulative risk of lifetime thrombosis is actually highest in the patients that have undergone splenectomy, where if you look at patients that have had their spleens out versus patients that haven't, um, the risk of uh, thrombosis is, I, I believe, four times higher. Um, so, you know, it's not only inherently the risk of thrombosis in ITP, but also the therapies and the treatments that we do that affect the long-time thrombosis risk. Finally, the question of whether these new agents enhance that risk, there's no doubt that using these agents in individuals who are older and have risks for vascular disease, meaning risks for heart attack and strokes such as obesity, abnormal lipids, diabetes, hypertension, that these agents are not only capable of, of raising the platelet count, but sometimes raising the platelet count to excessive heights. In that regards, in individuals who might otherwise be candidates for interventions such as aspirin to reduce the risk, they can in fact now be at risk with the excessive use of these agents to develop arterial events. That is the reason that the recommended platelet count for individuals receiving thrombopoint receptor agonists, that's L-thrombopag, brand name Promacta, that is Romiplosin, brand name N-plate, should be a platelet count between 50 and 100,000, and particularly in older individuals with vascular risk factors.